So when we're trying to modify behavior in dogs, something that we use a lot of is called graded exposure. And it's a method to be able to desensitize a dog to a trigger and you're doing it by reducing the volume on the trigger enough so that the dog doesn't react. And so what I've done here is, uh, and let's imagine we're walking down the street and as you walk down and there's someone coming against you on the same side and your dog goes crazy. Now with puppies that's pretty normal, uh, but they should grow out of it and the main thing is if they don't then we've got some problems. So what we want to be able to do is to get dogs so that they will not react and we have to start at a distance away. So let's take the walking example. What you would do in that situation is rather than walking on the same side as the dog that's coming against you, we would go to the other side. And uh, that way they're on one sidewalk, you're on another sidewalk, or you're on the shoulder depending, and you're walking and you're 30 to 40 feet away from the trigger, the stimulus as we call it, and hopefully what by doing that you're able to walk down and your dog doesn't react. Now what we want to be able to do then is say, okay puppy, heal and we'll just keep walking. Now one of two things can happen. One is the, your dog will say, of course I'll, be, I'll go nice and quiet and I will heal here and I've, you've got my full attention and you just walk on by and you do great. More commonly, that doesn't happen. <laughs> what happens is you start going down and your dog starts to look at the other dog and so then you have to start doing plan A and B and C and D. So what you're doing then is, number one, and if, this, this is your, if your dog is just on the edge, you get them to pay attention to you and you say, heal, offer treats, and that way you keep attention on you as you're going by and that way hopefully continue on your walk. If that doesn't work, as in you're still too close to this stimulus, then what you can do is as you're, as you're walking down the road is you turn into a driveway and then once the dog is passed you come back out and keep going. Uh, the other side is you may be going down and you, there's no driveways or anything like that you do a U-turn and just keep going. And so what you're trying to do is prevent yourself and the dog from getting too close so that your dog starts to react. If you can get closer, wonderful. Uh, this distance will vary depending on the activity level of this dog. If it's a 12-year-old Basset that's just wandering down the road, your dog probably won't react to it. If it's a two-year-old Rottweiler that's at the end of his leash barking at you, yeah, you're probably going to have to be way away from that. Okay, So the key is, we're trying to do this graded exposure. We want to have a successful pass at whatever distance is suitable for your dog. And by continually going back and forth here, you go one way, you go the other way. And if there's a dog park here, like a little fenced in area, uh, where dogs are running around and you can be over here, fantastic. Then what's going to happen is you're going to keep going at this distance and then your dog will realize that, hey, I can just do this and I can have a nice walk with my mom or dad and not need to react because what you've done is you've conditioned the dog to not react to the stimulus at that distance. Then you can start to get closer and closer and closer. Uh, there was one consultation I did, it was a dog that was a good sized dog, again, out of control, and they took her for a walk and it was just fantastic. She had a, uh, an app on her phone that showed where she went, and what happened is she sent it to me showing this crazy uh, method. She said, this is the most stupid dog walk I've ever done in terms of not getting anywhere at all. But that's the key. She dedicated the walk to the dog 
And she says, it's also the best walk I've ever had because my dog did not have one reaction to uh, a person or another dog. And that dog was notorious for barking and just reacting to whoever it went by. So the point is, she had a very successful walk. You know, next time, yeah, you can start getting closer and closer. Okay, but the great exposure idea is that we're going to start off at a distance where the stimulus does not cause the reaction and we get them used to that level and some days uh, your dog may be more reactive, you've got to back off, other days you can get closer. Uh, the, oh, one other thing, when you're walking back and forth like that, the last thing you want to do is stop. If you stop and have the dog beside you and then they have a chance to not walk but they're just sort of sitting and then they go, there's a dog over there. That's what you don't want. You want to keep them walking, you want to keep their attention on you. As soon as you stop, that gives them the opportunity to focus on the stimulus and that's when you can lose it. So keep walking no matter what you do. But this program, I say, is, is found fundamental to many things. You can use the same idea to sound sensitivities. Uh, it can work like that. I had a client whose dog uh, was reacting to the noise of flies. Uh, the poor dog used to hide under the chairs if there was a fly in the room. And the, what happened with that one is that uh, if you look on the internet, put in sound and flies. And you'll get a whole ton of files that you can download or you can just play them. And you can have a single fly, you can have two flies, you can have a flock of flies. If that's what you call them, I don't know. Um, but you can start off with low volume, far away, and then you start to crank it up as the dog doesn't react. You can do the same thing with fireworks. We did that with our dog. So this is how we're going to use this. And that way we desensitize them to the stimulus that they're reacting to. So if you need help with any uh, behavior, give me a call, send me an email. I'd be glad to try and help you out. Okay, thank you.